Hi guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art and today I'm going to be demoing a fall landscape for you. For this uh, picture I'm going to be using the Co Anor Geoconda uh, pastel pencils. Um, you can see they've been used quite a bit. And my Mungayo Gallery soft pastels. Um, these have become kind of my go-to pastels for everyday life. This is the set of 60 and I, I really really enjoy these pastels. Um, this is the reference photo we're going to be using. I just found it on Pixabay and you can take a screenshot if you want to have a reference photo to work from. So I looked at the reference photo and then judging from there I decided what colors I wanted to use. So these are colors I'm picking from those two sets that I found and for the most part I used really similar colors and a lot of like earthy tones and grays and blues, uh, but then I picked out a few fun colors like the magenta and the orange to kind of add some vibrancy and, and some playfulness to it. I also grabbed that kind of dark turquoise. That color isn't in the reference photo, but I didn't have a light turquoise that I could really use that kind of matched what was in the reference photo. So I'm gonna do some mixing on the paper to try and achieve that color I want. I am working on gray toned paper. This is pastel matte paper and it is in a sketchbook that I made. It is a sanded paper, but instead of using sand, it uses cellulose, but it, it's a very, very fine textured paper, but I, I really like it in my sketchbook. And then I took some pastel pencils and then I started sketching in the main landscape. You can see I kind of used oranges and browns for the ground. That's because I wanted my pencil sketch to blend into what I was working with. And then I used a light gray color to start sketching in the clouds of the, of the sky. And I'm just doing general rough shapes. I'm not following this too particularly or being like too precise. I'm just using the reference photo to get my basic shapes and where the highlights will be. I then took my white pastel pencil and I'm just blocking in where the highlights are. This is to help me not lose that sketch because sometimes when you start getting lots of color in there and you start blending it, you can lose your sketch. So I'm just using this white highlight as an anchor point to help me remember where the highlights are and where those clouds are. Then I'm taking this kind of dark phthalo Prussian blue color and I'm just starting to block in the dark shadows of the sky. And I would say the sky is the main focus in this picture. That's why it's taking up probably two thirds of the, of the paper and it's a big dramatic sky. So I really wanted that to be the focus. So I'm just getting this blocked in. This is kind of the roughed in shape of it kind of think of it as an underpainting so to speak it's I'm not trying to be fussy no details I'm going to be blending it in a minute I'm just trying to get these base colors down and you can see that I did a little bit of turquoise at the bottom right near the horizon line that's because as the sky gets closer to the earth it tends to get a little bit more green toned and so you start getting more turquoise colors it's also lighter in color so I have that turquoise color and I've layered it with some lighter blues and some whites and that's to start building up the base to make a light blue. So if you don't have your exact color you need in soft pastel, you can layer your colors on your paper and blend them on there to achieve the desired look. So the tool I'm using right now is called a soft tool with two F's in the soft. This is made by the company that makes pan pastels. Those are almost, they look like makeup um, compacts or something. They're a type of pastel that's really, really finely milled that you apply using a sponge versus directly onto the paper with your hand. And you use the soft tool to apply that pigment to your paper. Um, but you can also use it to blend your other pastels. So I've been using that to kind of blend in this base layer of pastels that I put in and they come in different shapes um, you can get them kind of like a filbert shape or a very oval round shape triangular but they're basically like a palette knife that you have like a, a, a 
sponge sock that slides over the end of it and the the sponge part is what blends the pigments and picks up uh, the pastel if you're using the pen pastels and I just use that to kind of rub in the first layer and you you'll see that it didn't blend a ton one it's because they're designed to blend pan pastels not regular pastels as much and I didn't put a lot of pastel on the paper especially since I'm working on sanded paper why I like working on sanded paper is it is very toothy it has a lot of grit to it even the finely milled kind um, or the fine textured ones like this pastel mat but it holds on to that pastel really well especially those early layers and it's not going to move the pastel around unless it has a lot of layers to it or a lot of pastel to grab onto and, and smudge around but I, I mostly have just been doing this blending to kind of hold that those base layers in and, and work them into the paper really well so that I can build more layers on top and I've just been layering in the colors in the sky that I see um, so adding reinforcing those highlights adding shadows to the clouds with the gray tones and just building it up and I'm keeping a light hand because if I pushed really hard I could put a lot of pigment down quickly but it would fill in the tooth of the paper and when you fill in the tooth of your paper there's nothing to grab onto more pastel when you go over the top so what will happen is is if you filled in the tooth of your paper if you take your pastel and you rub over the top of it it won't deposit any more color it'll just kind of slide across the top especially if you are taking a hard pastel and you have a really filled in tooth of the paper soft pastel layers and you take a, a more firm textured one and you rub it over the top it'll just kind of scratch off what's already been deposited or it won't deposit anything so just something to keep in mind when you are layering your pastels to be soft keep a light hand and just gradually build it up it's similar with working with colored pencils or those types of mediums just just take your time and build your layers up but you can see as I'm adding more layers the pastels are blending more it's like adding more bearings <laughs> to the to the paper and so they're all going to slide and move around a lot more So what I've been working on, in addition to just building up the base layers of colors, is I've started to build up the contrast. So if you look at the reference photo, you can see the top half of the sky is a lot darker, and, and it's particularly darker on the right hand. So the top right hand side of the sky is almost black in its value. And so I've started to add really dark, navy and indigo blues to that side I've also started to build up the shadows in the clouds and I want this contrast because that's part of what makes the reference photo so striking is you see this dark blue moody cloudy sky with high contrast and it's contrasted next to this like yellowy orange color and the blue and orange are opposite colors so they naturally like make the other stand out more when they're next to each other like this and then with the high contrast added to it it just makes it a very striking photo and if some of the terminology i'm using is a little confusing let's break it down for a second so value is how light or dark something is and it's on a it's on a spectrum so you have your pure white your slightly off-white color all the way to your like medium gray to your darkest black and all the colors in between there and it can also happen in color so not just black or white through black it can also be your spectrum of a very 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 pale light blue that's almost white all the way down to a dark indigo almost black uh, blue color like what you see in the paint aisle where you'll 
when you're looking at paint samples and you'll have all these different gradients of the same color, they're just, some are a little bit lighter and some are a little bit darker. That's value. Contrast is how much different those colors are. Um, so the highest contrast you can possibly get is pure black with pure white. Next to each other, they stand out. And then there's all those other values, all those gray tones and other colors, how dark or light they are will fall in between that. So if I'm saying I want something with more contrast, um, I want the lights and darks to be next to each other so that they really pop. Um, so that's kind of what I mean. Um, if you are having a hard time knowing what things need to be darker, or what things need to be lighter, you can take a picture of your painting you're working on and make it black and white. That can help you see what things are blending in together that shouldn't be blending in. Um, it can also help to turn your reference photo black and white as well, just to go back and forth on to kind of see what things are close in value and what things are not. Sometimes adding color to it can make it tricky to pick out that variation. So after that note, let's talk about what's going on in the painting. So I added the mid-ground, um, so I started blocking in the mountains, and something I realized was that <laughs> something I thought was a mountain in my reference photo, like a very distant mountains that were blue, were actually a, a gray cloud, and I didn't realize that until I was almost done with the painting. So it's one of those artistic changes that happen in the picture, and then I just blocked in uh, the the grass tones and I kept my grass that I added for the most part very horizontal brush strokes um, especially as it gets more distant you're not seeing the individual grasses growing you're seeing it as a whole and so you want to you'll achieve that feeling that it's all one thing if you keep it more horizontal in your your strokes and then I just blended that out and then I'm coming back and tweaking the sky a little bit more. The reason why I like working um, on the sky first and then working my way forward, at least for the base layers, is it helps me start to achieve that feeling of distance. And I don't get like weird halos around things that I, I've added later on. And I don't know, in, a, in my brain, it just is easier to layer things on top of the things that are further away and then I am just adding blues to the mountains because they're in the distance the ones on the the right hand side are darker and they almost read black in the photo but I I added some blues and and grays to them just to give them a little bit more depth and to help them read as a little bit more distant and then the ones that are really clouds but I made into mountains I had them be a lot more gray. And then I'm just blending it out with other soft tools I have. There's one that you can see I was too lazy to find another oval one. And so I just grabbed one of my palette knives that was in the same box as my soft tools. And I just stuck the oval sponge into it. <laughs> but uh, it works the same. It's, it's just a different palette knife that wasn't designed to be used with soft pastels but now I'm starting to add more vertical strokes and you can see I'm starting to add colors that you didn't see in the reference photo um, originally I thought maybe I'd do it a lot more yellow toned but then as I was going along I really wanted to to play with that magenta and that that dark orange color so I started putting those in also I wanted to darken up this uh, foreground section so that the white, the really light grass strokes that are a paler yellow will stand out. Um, again, creating more of that contrast. And you can see in the reference photo that grass that's close up, you can see those shadows next to it. So I just find it easier to make it dark and then add the highlights after the, over the top. And there's my, my goofy palette knife. <laughs> that I was using and I just kind of worked in those grasses that I've, I had created. And now I'm starting to block in the trees. And I did not do as many trees as are in the reference photo. Um, 
part of it is I just didn't feel like it. And I don't think that's what the picture needed. Um, my, my sketchbook isn't that big, as you can tell. And so you're, you're not able to get as much detail in your, your pictures, especially something like this, where there's a lot going on. There's a big sky. It's a big landscape scene. You can't add as much detail in your picture as you would as if I had done the same picture in a 16 by 20 shape, I would have been able to add a ton more detail because there was just more room for me to draw. And simplifying this landscape scene was a way to help me be able to achieve the look I wanted without overcrowding the picture. So I just took a kind of a dark brown pencil and I started blocking in just the basic shapes of the trees. I kind of rolled my pencil around to make sure my 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 lines weren't too perfectly straight. I left gaps where I wanted the the orangey leaves to be and I just started blocking that in and building up the shape. And I'm going to go back through and tweak the sky more and those kinds of things. I'm just blocking this in. I probably would recommend like if you, especially if you're new to pastels, I would recommend working on the sky a little bit more and getting it a little bit closer to being done before you put in these trees because it can be tricky to work around them. But I just was living dangerously. I This was my second painting I did coming back to art after taking this past summer off. And I was just doing a bunch of sketchbook pictures and just trying to warm up my brain and getting it used to thinking like an artist again so that my hand does what my brain wants. Does that make sense? Sometimes I feel like there's a disconnect, especially if I haven't done anything like that for a while. Um, I can't always get my hand and my, and my brain to, to work together in the, in the way that I want. And cause I might not be able to think creatively enough or my hands just out of practice of manipulating the pastels or the paintbrush a certain way. So these warm-up pictures I did um, during this week were all just spent just getting getting back in the art mode. But I'm just layering up the colors. You can see in my reference photo the grass is a lot more yellow toned and I will add more yellow to the grass later on. But I was really liking the orange tones with the blue sky because orange and blue are complementary colors, meaning they're opposite colors on the color wheel, but they complement each other really nicely when they're next to each other. Um, so complementary color or like opposite colors on the color wheel are your red and green. We know red and green look really nice together, but if you mix them together, they turn brown. Blue and orange are opposite colors on the color wheel. And if you put them next to each other, they seem more vibrant and they make the other stand out more. But when mixed together, they turn brown. Uh, but I was really digging kind of the orange tones in the, the grass and the tree and that really fall autumn vibe it was getting in contrast with the, the blue sky. And I don't mean value contrast um, the yellow it's obviously a brighter value and so it stood out more in contrast for value but for color contrast the orange looked really cool with the the blue so that's kind of why I leaned more that way now I'm going back to the sky and I am adding more highlights and kind of building up the the clouds just a little bit more Sometimes as you work, things can get smudged and, and darken. And also as you put other colors next to things, something that might have seemed like the perfect color and the perfect value might not be that once you get the other sections of the picture done. So I just, after I do like the initial blocking in on a picture, I tend to jump around and see what needs to be tweaked and adjusted. And I'm just coming in adding some more blues, kind of layering up the blues. I wanted this to have a painterly effect and not be too precise. So you can see I'm not being 
too exact with my colors or how even they're blended. I'm just just laying them in and, and having fun. I'm coming back in with that kind of turquoise color to help help build that gradation from the dark blues into the light blues and the greeny blue colors. Because with our sky, I mentioned it earlier, not only does it turn into like a tealy, more yellow toned blue, it also is lighter in value when it's closer to the earth. So I'm just making sure I'm getting that effect within my, my painting. And just blending it carefully around the orange trees so I don't get too much orange in my sky. And then I'm coming in with this kind of dark Prussian blue color to get those high contrast back in. So I'm just kind of doing this back and forth on my picture and just adjusting things as needed. And I'm focusing mostly on the sky because the sky is kind of where I want most of the focus to go. Um, just because I left how dramatic it is in the reference photo. Um, this stage of painting always kind of reminds me of a dance. You're kind of doing this back and forth, give and take, um, laying colors down, tweaking them, and just dancing around the page because what you put down in one area can, can affect how other things look. So I'm just kind of doing this back and forth dance. But if that's not how you work as an artist or how your brain processes things, that is totally all right. I know some artists work in one area and get it 100% done before they move into the next section. Um, so they might do the sky 100% or 99% and then move on to the next section. And that's what works for them. And other artists I know um, tend to uh, be really direct with how they layer down colors so they don't do as many layers. They tend to be a lot more, I guess, confident. They just do a few strokes and get that feeling of what they're trying to achieve and then they don't do anything else. So part of art is finding what works for you. You guys can watch videos and take lessons from me and see what works for me at least what works for me right now in this stage of my art journey. And you can watch other artists that have very different styles and see what works for them. And then you can experiment and play. And you might like my style better or you might like a different artist's technique of how to draw a little bit more. Or you might do a hybrid or combination of the two. So you find out what works for you through experimentation and then be confident in that. Don't feel like you have to copy an artist exactly so that you can be a good artist. The, the most important thing is that you find the way to do art and that is enjoyable, that makes you want to keep drawing and creating and coming back to it. So I am currently using my white pastel pencil and I'm starting to do kind of the wispy lines that are in the clouds. These clouds are kind of wispy on the ends and I'm trying to achieve that w mostly with my pastel pencils. I can do it a little bit with my uh, Mangayo pastels but with it being such a small picture and the Mangayo pastels being so thick and especially with them being round instead of square it can be hard to get um, around like a, a thin line so I find that the, the pastel pencils were really helpful with those kind of wispy lines. Um, but the only reason why it worked is because I have been doing really thin layers with my pastels. So I haven't filled in the tooth of the paper. If I had had thick layers of pastels already down, there's no way I would have been able to get those white wispy lines to on the paper because my pastel pencil wouldn't have been able to deposit color. It might have even scratched, it would have even scratched off some of the pastel that I had laid down. So that's one of the things you want to do when you are working is just don't go too fast. Don't lay down your, your pigment too fast. That way you can always come back and, and tweak and adjust as needed. 
Another thing you can do if you do happen to lose the texture of your paper, you notice it's hard for your pigment to adhere or deposit, is you can use something called workable fixative. It's a spray you can put on your paper. It will darken it a little bit, but it kind of holds all the, the layers of pastel that you've added down and adds a little bit of texture to your picture so that you can do a couple more layers over the top. Sometimes that is enough if it's getting questionable to like allow you to finish that section if you are careful. If you have a really thick layer, it might not be quite enough, but that can always be a tool that you use to kind of help you as you work. But I'm just coming in as adding more of these wispy lines and again taking that uh, uh, catalyst or the wedge catalyst or giant rubber shape or whatever you want to call it and use that to help smudge in some of the lines and then uh, using the soft tool to kind of get some softer lines in there and just kind of creating that uh, those last effects I want. Now I'm coming in with my Pell Yellow and adding some highlights to my grass. This is a little bit more vibrant of a yellow tone and I'm just adding it and I'm keeping it a little bit more back and forth and horizontal strokes because I'm having it try to, I'm trying to have it appear more in the distance than in the foreground. And just getting these last few details in before I finish the picture. This is kind of like a taupey brown color adding more layers, trying to make it feel like it's grassy in the foreground. And this burgundy brown color, just kind of rolling my pastel to get these thin lines. They're not gonna be perfect and they really benefit like with things like with grass because your line isn't gonna be too perfect or the same thickness. You're gonna get kind of an evenness, which is what you find in nature. And I'm just layering up the colors. Again, I'm not putting too much emphasis on kind of the grass section because I don't want that to be the main focus. Like it's part of the picture and I want it to be looking nice and, and look like it's cohesive with the picture, but I don't want it to be perfect. Um, if I was to do this picture again, I'd probably add a little bit more blues to the grass to just kind of tie that sky into the foreground but I'm, I'm adding a little bit here just to kind of pull it in a bit but I would looking at it now I would I would do a little bit more of the blue tones and just kind of tweak it and I know it can be deceiving in these videos because they're all edited down and sped up but I took several hours to work on this and I took several breaks. There was a few times where I got a little discouraged with this picture just because I wasn't sure if it was going to work out and like my hands weren't doing what I wanted them to do just because I was out of practice. So I took breaks, came back, readjusted and just don't forget to do that with yourself as you are learning or if you haven't worked in past in a medium for a while and you're feeling frustrated because you feel like you've forgotten a lot of things just remember with practice it all comes back and you learn new things so I'm just doing the last few adjustments adding some shadows to the to the leaves on the trees and adding a few more branches and just getting those final details in and just pulling a little bit more of that blue um, I think I mentioned earlier that I wanted some more blues in here. I think what I would have done differently is had um, a little bit more blue tones in the early layers of like the shadows and the, the tree trunks and things like that, just to kind of make it a little bit more cohesive. So at this point I am almost done. I'm just doing the final tweaks and adjustments with the picture. And I decided I wanted a little bit more wispiness in the clouds. I know that's pretty much what this whole video has been, is me trying to achieve the perfect cloud effect. If you have done a lot of clouds, you know sometimes they are the hardest thing you can do uh, and paint and draw. But I held my 
pastel uh, almost parallel with my paper and then I just gently uh, grazed it over the top of the paper where I wanted those highlights to be and that was how I was able to achieve kind of this uneven effect that still allowed some of the other colors to shine through and then I just barely blended some of that in with my soft tool then I signed it with my magenta pastel and then added just a little bit of a shadow just to help it stand out just a bit more and I thought I was done with the picture and I was pretty happy with it especially for just coming back to pastels after taking several months off and after looking at it in the viewfinder I decided there was just a few more tweaks I needed to do before I would be happy with with the picture I have found that so often I think I'm happy with something and I sign it and then I come back an hour later and there was something I wasn't happy with but I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful if you did please hit the like button if you have any questions about what I did um, or the tools I used please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them and if you want to see more of what I create please um, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.